So what we want to do is get the sealant cleaned off of the threads on here. You can see there's still some sealant on some of these. You need to give them a little clean up. And we'll clean up the surface here. See it's looking pretty good. And then we'll do the same thing on the block and then we can start refitting the sump and everything. So on the bottom of the block, around where the oil pump is, just want to try and give that a good clean all the way around so we give something good for our sealant to stick to so for sealing up the sump i'm just using some of this sealant that i bought from my local guy just follow the instructions on yours mine just says to put a bead on the sump and then finger tighten it and then wait for one hour and then tighten it so i've already i've already got my sump on there finger tight um, so I'm just going to wait for a bit now, wait for that hour, and then I'll come back through and I'll go around and tighten all those up. So that's finished now. Now we can finally get back on with refitting uh, the timing belt, which is what we are really here to do. So step one of fitting the new timing belt is to line up the timing marks. Now this belt, which I bought from Main Dealer, didn't come with the marks on it. I can only assume that the marks don't really matter but I have copied them over from my old belt um, just in case and I recommend you do the same thing and then you line this up with the marks on the cams there's two of them so you just copy them both over so we'll just fish that belt down there now that's in. So I'm not convinced it matters but we've lined up this mark here on the cam with the mark on our belt and then we've done the same on the other side obviously it's not the crank pulley isn't fitted yet but the belt is pretty much where it's supposed to be so like I said I'm not 100% sure that that matters um, just because this is even from main dealer if you wanted the part number for it There's the part number there. So, and this is from Main Dealer, Peugeot Main Dealer. So, who knows? I'm not convinced that those marks actually matter. I just find it a bit strange that they put it in the Main Dealer procedure. Sometimes I think they just do it to confuse us. But in any case, belt's on, we can refit. So there's a mark on the back of the crank gear here the gear wheel and then it just goes inside this little indentation here to the side so we can fish these two here in together with a little assembly there we go that's that in there now in there nice and tight right that's good so what we'll do is we'll just put the bolt in there loosely just to stop it from going anywhere and then we'll move on to fitting the idler and the tensioner okay then so you just want to get our idler started Now, the important 
important one. Let's get our attention out in there. Might need to move you guys out of the way. I think I might have to remove this as well before I accidentally damage it. really can't show you this easily but basically what you do is you turn the tension around that way and then you line up this mark here in the silver washer with this mark here on the back of the idler and then you obviously then you tighten the old go down um, I'm gonna do that just now but I just need to move you out of the way so I could do it and then I'll show you what it should look like so this is the correct fitment you just need to line up these two marks here and then tighten that down very, very simple to do. And now we can refit this cover plate. So that's all fitted and tightened down. Just double check the marks still line up, which they do. What you can't do is you can't tighten down the crank pulley yet. So this is this bolt here is just finger tight in there at the minute. Now the reason that you can't tighten it down all the way is because that sprocket on the back needs to be loose um, so that it's able to, to turn freely. So now that that's done, we can, um, we can go ahead and refit the crank pulley. So stage one is 50 newton meters. Stage two, 180 degrees. So put a little mark on the top of the bolt, turn it to the bottom, you're done. And let's get this, get this show on the road. Let's see how far we've done. <laughs> Not very far. Oh, this is gonna be tough. I just know it. You just get a sense sometimes about these things. Halfway. Okay, it's going to take some serious muscles. You need a bigger bar. Let me just try first. Just try using my foot for a bit of extra leakage. Almost there, so close. Come on. Come on. Yes. That 180 degrees will test your muscles 100%. That's flipping tight. Oops. So now that we've disturbed our crankshaft oil seal. There we go. Let's pop 
that out. Get a little bit of rag in here, just give this a quick clean and then we'll fit our new one. So I took note of where the old seal was. You should definitely do the same. It should be just underneath this lip here. So it shouldn't protrude. So this still needs to go in a little further. And I think we're gonna need some kind of a seal driver to push it on the rest of the way. This is just the installation tool that comes with it essentially. So I've got a little seal driver here. I'm gonna tap it in the middle. Check it, and then I just keep doing this gently and easily. We're not in a in a hurry. We definitely don't want to get it wrong, so we'll just do it slowly but surely until we uh, get the whole thing home. So the crankshaft uh, radial seal there should be fitted nice and uniformly. It shouldn't have any damage to it or anything like that. And that's it then. Now we can refit the outer crank pulley. Oh no we can't, we have to fit that cover up there first. But essentially we're, we're well on the road to um, just getting everything reassembled. Now when refitting this, it does say, weirdly enough, to apply liquid sealant to it, but I don't think we're going to bother with that. We're just going to get this thing fitted up in here. Just like this. Oh, I might be doing the wrong way around. No, I don't think I have. That's your water pump up there, just in case if you're changing yours. You don't have to change it with the timing belt. It's got nothing to do with the timing belt, so if it does fail, you can always just change it independently. No harm done. There we go. The outer bolts on the crankshaft are 30 newton meters. to install that belt basically what we need to do is just put the belt on this pulley first and then slip it over that and then you just get one bolt started and then you can just grab one side of the pulley and just pull it down 
and then you can just install these two other bolts and then you can tighten it down just make sure you don't cross thread anything but it's not it's not difficult at all to fit you'll see when you give it a try now we just need to install the other auxiliary belt Now, time to remove the timing tools and spin over the engine and make sure that everything is a okay. Of the engine for the time being. Now we'll just go down and remove our crank pin, then we'll turn this over. Now we need to do is turn our whole engine over by two revolutions and then check the timing. So that's it now. We've um, our timing tool does fit again. I mean, you could bolt it down again to be doubly sure. There isn't really much point. The crank locking pin is in. The timing tool fits on the top, so the engine is in time. So now all we need to do is just reassemble everything. We've seen it all come apart, so I'm not going to do uh, the most impressive how-to on putting it back together. Obviously, you have to clean all of the rubbish out of the inside of the valve cover and now we just reassemble just make sure I haven't left anything in there no bits of paper towel or anything no everything looks fine it's all looking good Start dropping bolts in, tightening them all down, and then just remember this ground one goes back here, and then there's a 10 mil on this corner here, so don't get those confused. So these were not very tight in the first place. What I'd probably do is start from the middle and then just get these ones here just snugged, and then do the outer ones. Don't do the outer ones first. You want it clamped down evenly from the middle going out. There we go, and then we just do all the outside ones. Now what we need to do is just try and put back as much of the wiring now as we can remember that we took off before we removed the inlet manifold. We definitely don't want to plug things back in that we then have to unplug or even worse put the inlet manifold back on to only find out that we're really struggling to plug something in so we'll do that now Be extremely careful of the seals on the back of the intake that we don't damage them in any way. Right, so 
think that's in place now what we'll do is we'll do the bolts on the back first then we'll do the bolts on the front then we can connect everything else back up so the part number for this oil is uh, PSA B71 2312 and this is 0W30 that's what this exact engine takes so we're gonna fill her up it takes 3.25 liters so you should have 1.75 liters left in the in the carton and skillfully try and pour it in there without getting a mess all over everything I don't know if that comes across on video but you can hear the cookies That time of year, they're back, kicking babies out of other birds' nests, making the birds feed their terrible offspring. It's nature's way. Okay. So we have to refit our battery tray. involves a whole lot of electromications so that goes on the side there so it's the back ones we took off last so we'll put those back on first that one on this side so that will clip into it's very important to clip these back in otherwise you might find it will, everything will be fine for a while and then not long down the line you'll end up with wires chafing through and electrical gremlins and you don't need that in your life just make sure you put everything back properly. There we go. So wherever there's a hole, there should be something clipped into it. There's two on the side. Oh, I think my head's in the way. Two on the side here. And that is for the, there's a ground that straps onto the body over there. And then this, Load of cables at the front here that will clip in, but I think before we mess around with those, we'll get this thing bolted down. Ah, so there's a little, there's a couple of little tabs, so you have to push it down and then slide it up to where the bolt holes align. And then we've got one thick bolt which goes at the back, and then the other two go at the front. Get that in there. Go on, get in there. That's that one. Don't need to be tight, they're not going to go anywhere. There we go. Now we play the game of clicky back in So that one there goes there. That one there goes in. And in there like that. That one there clips back on the bottom. Right, that's it. So that's our battery tray clipped back in nice and solid. Now we can drop back in our battery, but I think before I drop the battery back in, I think I'll do that last, because I think it was the first thing I took out. I might put the air boxes back in. So let's get this. I think this literally just hangs there. It must clip in something. Aha, no it doesn't. This part here, this part here clips into a bracket. You'll see. You will see. You can't get it wrong. There we go. Just push that onto there. Lovely jubbly. There's our little 10 mil just here. Which will get snug down. And then we've got this breather, which looks like it goes on like that. There we go. Very good. Important to get all those vacuum hoses back on. Vacuum hoses can cause all kinds of problems. 
it's important not to move on to the next thing before you finish tightening something down, otherwise you leave you can easily leave bolts loose by mistake and all that sort of nonsense. Better just have it all done the first time and then move on to the next thing. So that is all properly fitted. Now we can put back in this little plenum chamber box vacuum reservoir, whatever it is thing that went down here. So once again, there's a little tab here that you locate, so it sort of slides down onto a hook. The hook will be pretty obvious. It's just down here next to a radiator pipe. And then we'll just hold this off for a minute. There we go. And that just sits there like that. Might feel a little bit loosey goosey, but that is honestly how it is supposed to be fitted. It's going to make sure the bottom doesn't pull out. No, yeah, it's clipped in. Okay, strange. Clip this back in. Job done. That's it, battery. Good. doesn't need to be super tight that's it everything is completely reassembled what we need to do now is pour the coolant back in and then we can fire her up and see what happens oh no I forgot something I've got something have to put this back in don't we just slide that little battery retainer what do you want to call it thing in down here that should just clip in, and that's what holds the battery in place. Yeah, there we go. Battery's nice and solid now. Oops, I don't want to forget that. It's an MOT fail having an insecure battery, and it is also a death sentence if it comes flying out of the car for either yourself or for other people on the road. So it's quite important to put that back in. Okay, now it really is just putting the coolant back in and turning the key and see what happens. And then obviously we'll have to check the oil again uh, since we've drained out the sump completely. Just make sure it's topped off, and that's that. We don't need the radio on, thank you. There we go. Let's see if she starts. And there we go. Happy days. Now we'll just shut her off and we'll check our oil and everything again. Oh yeah, and also do not forget to uh, torque down all your wheels and everything. And then take it for a test drive. Make sure that everything is hunky-dory. And that's the end of that. Well done. You've just completed fitting a timing belt on a 1.2 Peugeot or Citroen. Or any other vehicle that has these. I think they are in some Toyotas as well. But in any case, well done.